Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the uh, A2, which is broken authentication, uh, which is on the OAuth top 10 list. So let's deep dive into, in the simpler words, what is the broken authentication. And we'll also talk about what is prevention. We'll also see some examples how uh, attackers have exploited or, or how the attackers could exploit it. So uh, we'll, we'll go through pretty much like, you know, detailed understanding on uh, what is the broken authentication, so which will help you uh, in the interviews and probably like in your career as well. So, uh, as per the OWASP, so this is the OWASP definition, application functions related to authentication and session management are often implemented incorrectly, allowing attackers to compromise password, keys, or session token, or to exploit other implementation flows to assume other users' identity, temporarily or permanently, right? So uh, this sounds a little confusing, but uh, what it is is compromise credentials, right? Broken authentication is uh, when you authenticate user uh, and the user uses uh, uh, credentials to authenticate, such as username, password, or multi-factor authentication, which are compromised, and that's why we have uh, broken authentication vulnerability. Now let's see uh, different ways on how does the attacker could exploit these uh, scenarios, right? So one of the most common ways in which credentials are compromised is when an attacker tricks you to willingly sharing your credentials through techniques known as phishing and social engineering. Usually this type of scams are uh, accomplished by a false sense of urgency and may try to take advantage of your trust of certain types of organization like a bank, insurance company, retail company, or even a government organization. So how it works is the hacker might call someone and claim that they work for individuals banking organization or I work for X, Y, and Z banking and I'm from like, you know, credit card department, your credit card has been compromised. And then they might say something like, okay, I need you to tell me your username and password so I can go in and fix it. Now that's, uh, uh, I guess, straightforward way, and we have experiences several times. Now, another way to do it is via email. So, uh, so they can send you the same information in the email message and pretending to be a legitimate organization requesting a username and password. Again, we have seen this several times. Uh, generally, uh, I think most of our uh, uh, mail accounts have this capability to identify and put in the spam or junk. But usually, there is a link that the victim needs to click on, uh, which takes them to a website that mimics to a login page. And this type of fake login page is created with the intent of capturing someone's username and password. Uh, this also resembles a little bit of click jacking. Uh, I'm not sure we, if we have covered that vulnerability, but if not, yeah, I'll, I'll, I should definitely cover. Now, another common way for hackers to obtain user and password is simply by guessing them. So that's going to be like, you know, uh, brute force, right? Or, or not even a brute force. Brute force is not guessing, but it's... Uh, based on your birth date, based on your, like, if I know you personally, then I may be able to guess your password. Now, you can think for a moment, like, what kind of information can be found on your social profile? So, this information can be obtained from your Facebook account or from your, any of the social profile, like your kid's name, and then you like most of the people use those information to uh, uh, generate the password. Now, the other thing also need to be remembered is that it's not always human with the user and password. Sometimes it's an application or a system that uses credentials to gain access. And this can also be so valuable to the attacker. So think of it as a service account. Now, in this case, uh, the software uh, that work together require credentials to connect with each other. So, for example, web server try to connect to the database server. Now, many of these come out of the box with the default password, uh, such as MySQL uh, came with, like, you know, admin password or something. Stuff that is stupid, simple to guess. Uh, and so make sure, like, you know, you update 
uh, those default credentials and you do not hard code those credentials in your application and, and blah, blah, blah. So all those things. So these are the various ways the, the exploitation works. Now let's uh, see one of the things uh, which we briefly talked about is the brute force. Now the brute force is pretty much simple. I'm sure you guys must know that, but I'm just going to give you uh, some background what the brute force is. So you might type in a few guesses, but it takes time to both think of new password and to manually type them into here using your keyboard. So the thing is, we have a different brute force attack. Like there is a dictionary based attack, there is a like a you know, sequential attack. So you can tell like how how attacker make it work is uh, they have a script or something which they configure with the computer, and then. Every, the, what the script would try every combination of letters, numbers, and special characters on the login page. And if the login page does not lock out the user after a set number of failed login attempts, then there is a fair chance a fair chance that the brute force approach with the eventually will happen upon the correct password. So, like you know, one of the things that I would always highlight to my client is. Uh, you should have some sort of brute force protection, like a captcha, recaptcha, or maybe multi-factor authentication or something to avoid this. So make sure uh, whenever you're working with your client, you uh, do check for this sort of attack because this is this seems very common, but it is mostly ignored. Now, if user uh, seems to entering the wrong password over and over again, so let's say you got the attacker logging in like you know ten times. So I don't think so. that's a legitimate user who's trying to log in. That's an attacker. So make sure you log them out. Now, credential stuffing is what happens when a major breach occurs and all of the user and password associated with the breach becomes publicly available. We have seen this many times. Like I have received email a few times that, let's say, Twitter account got a compromise recently and there are other accounts who are uh, got compromised in the previous uh, few years and uh, it's a best practice that you uh, reconfigure or, or reset your password to avoid uh, any potential damage to your account so that's a smart thing to do right uh, the trouble is that many users don't change their password after a breach occurs and a lot of users also use the same user and password across multiple accounts in this approach, credential stuffing, a hacker will use the same credentials which were compromised from one site and try on different accounts. So that's uh, like if you're using the same credential for your banking or for your email. From from my perspective, I think your personal email account is more critical than your banking account. Uh, if it's like you no... Know, link to your other accounts and the reason i say is because let's say your bank account got compromised okay the worst attacker can do is maybe configure a new setup or like you know new external account where he wants to transfer the money or, or do something for everything wherever your banking account is tied with so for example your personal account the bank will send all the emails to that account so you will have a notification uh, you, they might require you to confirm something before creating the external party in your account. So your your personal account is more important than your email account because it can be used to reset the password. So, for example, someone is trying to reset the password on your banking site, it will again send your email to your personal account and you will get notification, right? Or, or it will prevent them from doing or going forward unless they have access to your email account. So that's why your email account is more important uh, more sensitive than your banking. Now, the another approach that attacker can use is to compromise credential is by taking advantage of poorly implemented application logic. Now, this is where uh, you as a soft developer can, could do something. Now, consider a scenario where the application users has forgotten the password, and we have all been there before. So you click on the link, say, I forgot my password, and follow the steps until you are either given temporary password or you are asked to create a new one. Now, a hacker can pretend to be the user who has forgotten the password, and if the website logic is improperly implemented, then they can take advantage of the poorly written code. So how might this work? Uh, now, an application is supposed to check users' previously chosen security questions with the correct answer. 
And now if they for, fail to do this correctly, then a hacker could potentially create a new password without actually going through the steps to prove that the account indeed belongs to them. Another way in which application might fail is if it asks the user to verify the security questions using drop-down boxes. Oh, that's that's terrible. So rather than filling the blank, this simply makes it too easy for a malicious person to guess the answer. So they just have to like you know keep on rotating uh, the answers until they get it right. And the worst part is when the forgot password flow fails, it takes advantage of by the hacker. Not only does the hacker have access to the account, but the legitimate user is now locked out. And not that this is kind of the attack uh, wouldn't work if the application required legitimate user to use multi-factor authentication. So that's why MFA, uh, CAPTCHA, and the forgot password. Uh, so we're going to see that, like, you know, uh, uh, impact of this in the next slide and also talk about uh, some of the examples uh, such as Yahoo Breach and, and I'm going to share my personal experience. So I think it was probably a few years ago, like many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, I've seen that in the Yahoo had a forgot password where you could simply answer like, you know, a couple questions and if you got it right, you right away allowed to set a new password. And if I know my friends, but they where he was born, maybe his bit of family history, I can easily reset those passwords. And, and that's what happened actually during that Yahoo breach. So uh, what happened with the Yahoo was, uh, so they unfortunately had suffered like a you know, number of large public data breaches in the past few years. Uh, and this have resulted in a measurable and significant cost to the business. Uh, I think that was back like recently in 2017, Yahoo was acquired by Verizon. And they paid like $350 million, uh, less than they had originally discussed after the breach were publicly announced. Granted, like $350 million is only about like 7.5% of the overall acquisition. But the particular Yahoo breach I'm, I'm talking about, it was occurred in 2014. And the details are publicly available in the, in the documentation. Now, the breach affected more than 500 million people. So... A couple of, uh, I think, Russian uh, hackers uh, targeted Yahoo accounts with the intent of reading through emails to find other sets of information like credit card, financial documentation, login information, etc. One of the main techniques that the hacker used was the social engineering. So, and that's, that's tough, right? Like, if you allow your website to be I framed or like click checked or you allow your website to be fished, then it's easier for the attacker to to attack the victims. So that's why these other controls are as important as the main controls of having the MFA and DD capture. Now the other, so the spear phishing uh, is when like when you receive the messages and it resemble emails from trustworthy senders and to encourage the recipients to open the attached files or click on the hyperlink message, some of the spear phishing emails attached or linked to files that one open download provide unauthorized access to the recipient's computer. We have seen this many times, like there's PDF bomb, or, and, and you can actually create such things in the using Metasploit, I think, yeah. Other spear phishing emails uh, also, like, you know, lure the victims to provide, well, log, login credentials to our accounts or... Uh, thereby allow them to like you know bypass normal authentication procedure. The fact that uh, this breach affected more than 500 million accounts just goes to show how easy it is for the hacker to basically trick an unsuspecting user into willingly giving over their account username and password. So the impact is huge. So make sure you consider all the right scenarios, right controls when you are designing your application with the authentication, right? Now it's, the first thing is it's really, really important to choose the complex password. Like you do not allow user to create that nickname or just that username as same as password or like A, B, C, D, E or some simple password. So you can do multiple things. You can enforce the complex password. Uh, you can make sure they are not using like words from the dictionary. Uh, you also make sure they are not using 
uh, password as like you know their username, their birth date, or or any such information which is which is on their profile. So uh, that would make like you know a strong password. And I think as far as the Microsoft uh, recommendation go, it's uh, around 12 characters with the combination of uh, uppercase, lowercase, and special characters. Uh, one of the applications that I use is LastPass to uh, generate the secure password and as well as store it. Uh, make sure your master password is secure again. Uh, if not, then you're just giving your key to the kingdom to the attacker. And make sure you also have MFA configured on your LastPass. So uh, that's that's how you can make sure you are creating the secure password because most of the time users do not create the secure password because it's very tough to kind of remember those. Now the second uh, way in your application is to properly store the password. We had talked about previously what's the difference between encryption and hashing and sometimes like developers still use encryption to store the password which is uh, not the right thing to do. So always hash the password and, and use the salting technique to avoid uh, like you know hacker even if the hacker gets hold of the database they are not able to recover the password. Uh, so I, I don't want to go uh, into that, but how the typical password hashing works is when the user type in the password, the password will get hashed whatever algorithm that you have chosen, and it will be matched with the database. So whatever the hash you have stored in the database, it will be matched against it, and if the match is successful, user will be granted access, otherwise not. So there is no decryption we are doing here. And we have talked about the multi-factor authentication, which is uh, <clears throat> in addition to your single factor, which is something you know, additional factor might be something that you have or you uh, something you are. Something that you have might be a physical key, like a UB key or a physical device. Uh, <clears throat> people most of the days use apps on their smart phone, like I use Google Authenticator a lot, <clears throat> which provides them digital key. So or also you can have like you know uh, if your laptop or or if it's on the um, like there's a bio, bio sensor you can also have the finger reader or something so you can use all of these prevention techniques to uh, build uh, like a secure bro uh, authentication mechanism or control to your application uh so yeah that's uh, that's about it uh, let me know uh, what other prevention techniques that you have used or would recommend in the uh, like you know, in this for this particular section, uh, definitely I'll be. Uh, I'm excited to read your comments. Uh, this concludes our discussion on broken authentication. But please hit the like button if you enjoy this video, and follow follow us on Facebook. Link is in the description. Uh, that's it from now. I'll I'll see you guys next week.